let's go on to 34. Okay, 34, you need to know your reproduction in plants uh, for this one. So you look at the close up, they ask you close up view of part X. This is the close up view of part X. There's pollen grains here on this particular round thing. Okay, you all of you should get it correct. The round thing here is the stigma, right? So the pollen grains are landing on the stigma. This should be pollination. I don't know why our students telling me fertilization. You can't even see fertilization happening, in fact, because fertilization takes place inside the ovary. And in fact, it's, it takes place inside the ovule, and the ovule is inside the ovary, right? The ovule is the one that contains the female reproductive cell. Okay, so on which flowers, study the flowers shown below, on which flowers can pollination take place? So pollination is process T. So I'm asking you about pollination. Do you think there is a need to tell me fertilization? Do you think there's a need to point out ovary or ovule? No. So why do I have that in your answer? Right? So I'm, I'm basing it on my students' paper, okay? That's why I'm sharing with you all the kind of answers that I always see. Okay, you don't have to mention about fertilization. You don't have to mention anything about the ovary or the ovule, right? I just asked you about pollination. So the first thing here, on which flower can pollination take place? Now, please remember, okay? And this is, you need to know this. Pollination can take place as long as there is stigma, right? As long as the flowers have stigma. I don't need the male parts at all. I don't need the anthers. Okay, as long as the flower has the female part, pollination will take place for sure. Okay, of course, if you ask me about fertilization, yeah, obviously I need the ovary and the ovule there. But the focus for this question is on pollination. Now, so if I ask you which flowers, I please, okay, my, you know what my students tell me or not when I say which flower, you know what their answers is? Uh, they tell me both. Look at the question, uh, on which flowers can pollination take place? Both. Okay? I'm, again, I'm sharing with you the answers that I always get. What is both? Okay? Please don't do such thing just because it's a one-word answer. Alright? If I ask you which flower, you be specific and tell me flower K and flower L. Okay? Why? Always give me evidence. Look at the picture. Why do you think pollination can take place for both of them? Just tell me they both have stigmas. Now, then you can tell me they both have stigmas. They both. Because previously, you already tell me it's flower K and L. Now, so you see, right? Which flower can pollination take place? So first things first, I need to you to tell me K and L. Then you tell me because both K and L have stigmas. Now, you need to explain. So don't stop there. So how come how come can how come they can pollinate when they pollination from other plants can land on the stigma? From where? Okay, so you realize K and L are a bit different. For flower L, you realize that the anthers are there. So I can simply say the pollen grains from the anthers of flower L will be able to land on the stigma. That is for flower L. Then how about K? You realize that K has no enter, you know, but where species. else the pollen grains come from? So you must tell me enter the same species. Yeah, of the same species, okay, will be blown by the wind or be carried by the wind and land on the stick. So you must explain both. Okay, don't give me a general answer. Okay, so you just say pollen grains from enters of flower L will land on the stigma. While pollen grains from another flower okay, of the same species, can land on the stigma of flower K. So that's how pollination takes place, right? So that is a very clear answer. Since I have flower K and flower L, they clearly one of them don't have the anthers. How will pollination take place? All this must be explained properly, specific to each flower, okay, to play safe to get your full marks as well. All right, so go straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush, right? Go straight to it. Talk about the two flowers here. Tell me they both have stigmas, right? Which is important for pollination to occur. Now, for this question, there's still a part C, right? So part C, of course, they ask you to identify the flower that, uh, which one? That has a higher chance of going through pollination, which is process T, with the help of the bees. So bees, birds, insects, all these, not, yeah, they are known as your pollinators, correct? 
Okay, there's a typo error, all right? So you change it to sweet smelling, okay? So if you look at my worksheet, I, yeah, sorry, I changed it already. Okay, so it's sweet smelling. All right, you all should be able to deduce that. Okay, so which of the following flower has a higher chance of going through pollination with the help of the bees? All right, uh, in this case, we all know it's flower M. If you get this wrong, if you choose flower L, it just shows that you don't understand how the characteristics of each flower. Some are wind pollinated, some are insects or birds pollinated. You need to know how these flowers look like. Okay, what kind of characteristics do they have for them to be pollinated by wind and for them to be pollinated by insects or birds? So if you do not know, you have to go and find out. Okay, so in this case, of course, it's flower M. So I think most of you got this. You tell me flower M is colorful and sweet smelling. So of course, it's able to attract pollinators like the bees. Now, if you stop there, I can only give you one mark or less. Where's your other second mark? Okay, the, you cannot, you still need to explain, you know. Um, look at the question. They're asking you to, ex, to basically explain how does the bees help flower M get pollinated? So yes, I know the bees get attracted to the colorful, uh, the colorful petals and them being sweet smelling, right? But then how? So when the bees go there, again, you must explain to me how they help in pollination. You cannot just tell me, oh, therefore the bees will, will be able to pollinate the flowers while they get nectar. No, while they get nectar, how does it help? So you must explain it in detail, which I've done this before. So when they go and visit the flower to get nectar, of course, the pollen grains from the anther get stuck to their bodies. Am I right? Then after that, it will then be transferred, right? It will then land on the stigma of the flower. That's how pollination takes place. So for two marks, you need to explain it in detail. You must explain to me how will the bees help to pollinate the flower. Don't just tell me the bees will help pollinate the flowers. Yeah, how? Why? Explain. Okay, everything must be very clear. That's for part C. Okay?